Australia's operational readiness with the long-range anti-ship missile, the LRASM, marks a defining moment in its evolution as a maritime power, reflecting a deliberate and sophisticated response to the shifting security dynamics of the Indo-Pacific. The AGM-158C LRASM, a stealthy, precision-guided anti-ship cruise missile crafted by Lockheed Martin, offers a range exceeding 370 kilometers, semi-autonomous targeting, and a low radar cross-section, positioning it as a cutting-edge tool for engaging naval threats in contested environments. As of March 2025, its integration into the Royal Australian Air Force FA-18F Super Hornet fleet, with plans to extend to the P-8A Poseidon and F-35A Lightning II, signals a strategic leap forward. This readiness was solidified by a successful live fire test in February 2025 off the coast of California, conducted with U.S. Navy support, transitioning the LRASM from a procurement milestone to an operational asset. Backed by a $895.5 million Australian dollars investment, this capability elevates Australia's deterrence posture, but its standing relative to regional competitors reveals a blend of technological superiority, strategic advantages, and areas for growth. The LRASM's journey to operational status began with a U.S. foreign military sale approval in February 2020 authorizing the purchase of up to 200 missiles for an estimated 990 million USD. The Albanese government's subsequent commitment of 895.5 million AUD nested within a 28 to 35 billion dollar decade-long plan to enhance long-range strike capabilities, reflects a sustained effort to modernize the Australian Defence Force. Deliveries, though not publicly detailed in precise numbers, have advanced sufficiently to support training since 2021 and the February 2025 test, suggesting a phased approach that balances acquisition with integration. The test firing, executed by No. 1 Squadron's FA-18F Super Hornets alongside E-7A Wedgetail, EA-18G Growler, and US P-8A platforms, demonstrated not only the missile's precision, successfully engaging a simulated maritime target, but also Australia's growing mastery of joint multi-domain operations. This interoperability with allies, particularly the US, amplifies the LRASM's operational impact, offering a collaborative edge that extends its reach beyond hardware alone. Deployment of the LRASM is currently anchored in the FA-18F fleet at Royal Australian Air Force Base Amberley, supplanting the shorter-range AGM-84 Harpoon and extending the Super Hornet's maritime strike radius with a 450 kilograms warhead designed to devastate large naval combatants like destroyers or carriers. Its stealth design, radar-absorbing materials, and onboard multi-mode sensors, including infrared and electronic support measures, enable it to navigate GPS-denied environments, autonomously identifying and prioritizing targets. This makes it uniquely suited for peer conflicts where electronic warfare and layered defenses dominate. Future integration with the P-8A and F-35A alongside the Kongsberg Joint Strike Missile promises a multi-platform strike ecosystem, though these efforts remain in progress. The LRASM's role is both tactical and strategic. It delivers precise maritime strike power, deters aggression along Australia's vital sea lanes, and strengthens coalition operations, aligning with the national defense strategy's vision of an integrated, resilient force capable of shaping the regional security environment. Recent operations underscore this shift toward readiness. The February 2025 live fire test, part of a broader Royal Australian Air Force deployment to the U.S. West Coast for exercises like Red Flag Nellis 25-1 and Bamboo Eagle 25-1, validated the LRASM's performance in Indo-Pacific relevant scenarios, emphasizing long-range strikes and maritime integration. While no combat deployments have occurred as of March 2025, the test's timing is telling. A Chinese naval flotilla's unannounced live-fire drill in the Tasman Sea that same month highlighted the escalating maritime tensions driving Australia's urgency. The LRASM's operational status thus serves as a pointed message of capability and resolve, 
reinforcing Australia's ability to counter threats at standoff distances in a region where naval power projection is increasingly contested. When benchmarked against regional competitors, Australia's LRASM readiness reveals a compelling mix of strengths and challenges. China, the Indo-Pacific's preeminent naval power, fields an extensive missile arsenal, including the YJ-12, 400 km range, and YJ-18, 540 km range, deployed across bombers, destroyers, and submarines. These outrange the LRASM in certain variants and leverage China's vast surveillance network, satellites, over-the-horizon radars, and drones for precise targeting. Yet, the LRASM's stealth and autonomy provide a critical advantage in contested environments, where China's reliance on external guidance could be disrupted by jamming or cyber attacks. China's numerical superiority and production capacity far exceed Australia's, but the LRASM's qualitative edge, its ability to penetrate defenses undetected, offers a counterweight, particularly in scenarios requiring surgical strikes against high-value targets. India, another key player, deploys the BrahMos missile, 300 to 500 kilometers range, integrated with Su-30 MKI fighters and naval platforms. Its supersonic speed, Mach 3, enables rapid, devastating strikes contrasting with the LRASM's high subsonic, stealth-oriented approach. While BrahMos excels in time-sensitive engagements, its higher detectability and shorter baseline range limit its survivability against advanced air defenses compared to the LRASM. India's focus spans maritime and terrestrial threats, diluting its naval specialization, whereas Australia's LRASM is purpose-built for maritime dominance, aligning with its geographic imperatives. Japan, an Australian ally, relies on the Type 12 missile, 200 km range, and is exploring longer range options like the JSM, 500 km range, but its capabilities lag in range, autonomy, and operational tempo. Indonesia's Exocet MM40, 70 km range, meanwhile, poses negligible competition given its limited reach and aging technology. Australia's strategic context further enriches this comparison. Its deep integration with the U.S., evident in joint testing and technical support from Lockheed Martin, provides a force multiplier unavailable to adversaries like China. Exercises like Bamboo Eagle, simulating Indo-Pacific challenges, refine tactics and interoperability, enhancing the LRASM's effectiveness beyond its raw specifications. However, the missile's complexity, optimized for naval targets, limits its versatility compared to multi-role systems like China's DF-21D, which doubles as an anti-ship ballistic missile. Financially, Australia's $895.5 million investment is significant but dwarfed by China's defense spending, underscoring a strategy of precision over scale. The LRASM's current deployment on just the FA-18F with modest stockpile numbers contrasts with China's massed, multi-platform approach, highlighting a gap in operational depth. Looking forward, Australia could amplify its LRASM advantage by accelerating P-8A and F-35A integration, increasing missile inventories, and deepening joint exercises with allies like Japan and the US. The missile's deterrence value is already evident, its stealth and range signal a credible response to regional provocations, such as China's Tasman Sea maneuvers. Yet, against China's sheer volume and India's speed-focused alternatives, Australia's edge hinges on quality, alliances, and strategic focus. Among middle powers, it outpaces Japan and India in maritime strike sophistication, cementing its role as a regional stabilizer. Culturally, the LRASM reflects Australia's shift from a defensive to a proactive posture, a mindset echoed by Defence Minister Richard Marle's emphasis on protecting maritime approaches and projecting power. Historically, Australia's naval strategy has evolved from coastal defence to blue water ambitions, with the LRASM marking a high-tech apex in this trajectory. Economically, its investment aligns with a broader push to secure trade routes vital to a resource-exporting nation. In the Indo-Pacific's maritime chess game, the LRASM is Australia's knight, agile, precise, and strategically positioned, 
yet its limited numbers and platform-specific deployment suggest a need for greater scale to fully match China's rooks and queens. As tensions simmer and naval competition intensifies, Australia's LRASM readiness offers a potent, if not yet exhaustive, answer to the region's challenges, balancing technological prowess with the realities of a middle power's reach.